Special shout out to you, Green, for sponsoring this video. So I've had the iPhone 11 Pro Max for a couple of weeks now. It's become my most favorite phone of the year. I mean, I really enjoy using it. Oh yeah, you're looking at this case. You're wondering what this case is. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later. And I actually have a matching wireless charger, which is the pimpest wireless charger I've ever gotten in my life. But we'll, we'll talk about those later. But more importantly, is this phone the phone of the year? I have my main SIM in an iPhone for the first time ever. Is this phone the best phone of 2019? We'll take a look at it. We'll talk about it right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. So when I finally decided to go ahead and buy the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I knew a couple things. Number one, I knew it was gonna be expensive, and it was. Number two, I knew that people were gonna give me flack for it, and they did. And number three, and probably most importantly, I knew I was gonna to have to change the way I use my phone in day-to-day -day use. But that actually ended up being a positive thing. So here's the thing, I've always been like an admirer of iPhones from afar, but they never really were for me. I always thought that the Android system of customization and a lot of the things that the way Android works made more sense to me. And to a certain degree, they still kind of do. But so much about way, the way the iPhone works is just magical. I had someone ask me in my comments recently if I was gonna become an Apple sheep. Well, the answer to that is no. I'm gonna call Apple out on every single thing they do wrong at any time, at any time. Doesn't mean I don't like this product. This isn't a fantastic product at a completely bad price point. But let's talk about the good and see if this thing matches up as the number one phone of 2019 and a phone that I would tell you to buy. First of all, the speed. This thing is fast, but it's fast because the operating system itself is optimized. Now, when people look at iPhone specs, a lot of times they give it guff for like the lack of RAM and, and all these other things and the lack of pure battery size. But the joke's on you because the operating system is not the same as Android. iOS is so optimized that it runs incredibly well on a much lower spec product, especially when it comes to RAM. Now, as far as processor goes, the A13 is much faster than anything on Android. You can get upset about it, but it's the truth. Why do you even care? The i13 is faster, so what? I get so many people triggered in the comments whenever I say something like that. It's, it's the truth, who cares? It's a faster processor. But multitasking on this thing is kind of non-existent. You see, <laughs> there's no real such thing as multitasking on iOS. I mean, you kind of get the multiple window thing, so you don't get true multitasking that you get on Android, which I love and miss to a certain degree. There are little hacks and runaway and side things you can do, like you can play music in the background and stuff. And for some reason, people on iOS think that's multitasking, but it's not. This thing doesn't really multitask. But I kind of don't care. What I've noticed is I'm only doing one thing at a time anyway. Uh, I can play music in the background and do other things, and that's pretty much all the more I needed to do. And the split screen functionality that I miss out on the Note series of phones, I don't actually miss. I don't, I don't miss it. And the camera, the camera is so legit on this thing. And that's one of the things that they've won this year on. Apple took the time to spend a lot of money, R&D, and attention to the cameras on this thing. And I gotta tell you, it paid off. That night vision is amazing. And not having to select it is incredible. Now, yes, you should be given the option because the operating system and the software isn't always right when it should use it. But nine times out of 10, I just take it out and take a picture and it works great. And video is fantastic as well. They figured it out. I have no qualms really about the camera. A couple of people have talked about a lens flare option, a lens flare issue they've had with their iPhones. And while it does kind of exist, um, it doesn't really bother me because I don't really get into many, too many of those situations where it's, it's a thing. Now, one of the things I think is kind of funny when people talk about how app iPhones can't work as good as Android is, for the most part, you're using the same exact apps. And what's hilarious about that is most apps, at least most of the main apps, are actually better on iOS. And whenever someone on Android side hears that, they immediately want to defend it, but they don't realize that it's kind of demonstrably true. There are options on Instagram and Twitter that are completely not existent on the Android side of things. And my guess is there's other apps like that as well. It's not just a one-off thing. And you will notice a lot of companies that put out apps on iOS first. I was never happy about that. It never made any sense to me. Even companies like Amazon who put out apps on iOS first when basically all of their software is based on Android. Like this is not the first time this has happened. It really, 
it kind of sucks. But basically, if it's not on iOS, if it's not on the App Store, it's kind of not a relevant app. That's why you see so many companies and so many developers ensuring that at the very least, if they have to choose between the two app stores, it's gotta be on the iOS app store. And you, you can hate on it, but it's, it's the way it is. So that whole usability thing kind of goes out the window for me. The apps exist on app store. Matter of fact, there's some apps that don't exist on the Android store. The thing that I use to edit this very video and everything on my entire channel, LumaFusion does not exist on Android. Like it could, I don't see why it couldn't, but it doesn't. Why would I miss out on that? So you can hate on it all you want, but it's the truth. The app store kind of makes up for it. This thing functions incredibly well. And the battery life is crazy. It's absolutely insane. I now only charge my phone every other day. That's nuts. Case in point, I took this phone off the charger yesterday morning. So I went through the entire day and right now it's almost five o'clock and it's at 30%. This is two entire days and it's gonna get me through the rest of today. And like I've said a million times, if your phone battery is dead, it doesn't matter what kind of tech is involved in the phone, if it has a better camera or nothing, if your phone is dead, it's dead. So you got your iPhone 11 and you can't quick charge it. Or you have your iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max and you have the one cable and the one power adapter to quick charge it and you wanna go on a trip and you don't wanna take it with you. At least that's what I do because I don't wanna lose those things. Well, Ugreen has you covered. I got a great deal for you as amazingly enough, Ugreen has sponsored this video. Thank you, Ugreen, for doing that, appreciate you. Let's tell you a little bit about these cables. Now, you need a special cable in order to get that fast charging and Ugreen has you covered. This is MFI Apple certified. That means Apple has checked it out, it's all good. It's a nice braided USB-C to lightning cable that will give you fast charging. Now, that's not the only thing you need, obviously. You need a power brick, which we got you covered here. 30 minutes, you get 50% charge on your iPhone 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, anything like that with this adapter. This little combination here is gonna cost you half of what Apple is trying to charge you. And if you quickly go down to the description below and click the link, you actually can get even more off. That's right, I worked a deal. You can get even more off than that. But what if you're somewhere where you can't plug in? Well, that's where this beauty comes in, a 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank. And let me tell you, this thing is legit. Not only is it the smallest 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank that I own, it also has Quick Charge 3.0, which again, will charge your battery up 50% in 30 minutes. Not only that, you know those ones where you try to figure out about how much battery is left on these battery packs? All you gotta do is press a button, it's gonna tell you. Did you know you can practically buy all three of these for less than the price of getting just the Apple cable and the Apple charger directly from Apple? Ugreen has you covered. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this video and giving you guys an incredible deal. So check it out. Uh, link is in the description below. You better hurry though, because this special deal is only for a limited time. The quality is great. And this thing is with me every single day. I also have kind of grown accustomed to the look of this thing. And the cases and stuff that you can get for your iPhones are pretty amazing. I and mean, if you look at this thing, this is by a company called Carved. And they also have a wireless charger. Uh, they sent these to me. They're not sponsoring the video, but they did send these to me. And they're really incredible. As a matter of fact, if you try to buy these, you will not be able to buy these. These are done by hand, carved from wood. From wood, y'all, done by hand, so every single one is unique. I'll leave a link in the description below because these cases are amazing and the wireless charger is so thin that you could literally put it anywhere. I, what this company is doing is really crazy, man. I love to make my iPhone look good and this is, this is a really good way of doing it. Even Carved, who makes cases for the three main phones, Google Pixel, Galaxies, and iPhones, use iPhones in all their ads. There's a reason for this. The other thing is, and you may not know or believe this, but people who use iPhones tend to spend more money on their iPhones or things that are associated with it, which is the whole walled garden thing. And companies know and like that. Does that make it better? No. But the battery life, the camera, the performance, the app availability of like, you know, everything, plus now Apple TV Plus and, Arc uh, and Apple Arcade. I mean, we're talking about a lot of value in this phone. So this has my main SIM in it. This is my main phone. I never thought this would happen. 2019 has been crazy. I went from the Note 9 at the beginning of the year to the OnePlus 7 Pro to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus to now this, that's a lot of phones in one year. That's the most I've ever gone through as my main SIM on a, in any particular year. So I love this phone. I'm absolutely, I absolutely love it. The way it performs, the way apps work, the way it's so smooth, the battery life, I love it all. Is this the phone that I'm saying is the best phone in 2019? Uh, no, no, nope, 
No, it's not, I can't. Can't tell someone to go out and get this uh, because of one major reason. I think it's critically important at this point that we start to put our foot down when these companies do this one thing that annoys me to no end. Value can be had at multiple price points. And while the iPhone 11 came in at a very good price point, a phone that I would absolutely tell people to get, the iPhone 11 Pro Max or the iPhone 11 Pro are just a little bit too expensive for me to ever tell someone to get. So this is kind of a weird thing. This is my favorite phone. It's the phone I'm gonna use primarily for the rest of the year, but I'm not gonna say it's the phone of the year. I'm not gonna tell people to buy this phone. If someone wants a new iPhone of some sort in 2019, I will tell them to get the iPhone 11, which is about 90% of what this phone is. But as far as the phone of the year, well, it's not an iPhone, not for me anyway. Why don't you let me know in the comments below which phone you think is the phone of the year, and in a couple of weeks, I'll reveal which one I think is the actual phone of the year for 2019. Because in my mind, it's not this phone. No matter how amazing and incredible and fantastic it is, to me, it's not the phone of the year. It's just too expensive. If this video helped you out in any way, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if it didn't, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I'm here every single week having a blast. Hope to see you again real soon. Peace and love, peace and love.